that's how that's done. Now, let's change gears and talk about what's inside of a volcano. There's magma. Now, remember, lava different. Magma is the, the, the juice. <laughs> the juice. I've got some juice with me. Uh, <laughs> it is the um, liquid rock underneath the ground. Now, interestingly enough, the magma um, has different constitutions or different chemical makeups. So it's the melted rock, which we just talked about. It's mostly made of silica and oxygen. All right. Now, if you look at the periodic table, ah, I've got one in my room. The periodic table has silicon, Si, and oxygen. So most of the liquid rock are um, silica. Okay, silicon and oxygen. Um, so if you have high, if it's thicker, we would say high viscosity. Write that down, high viscosity. That means it's really thick. So like um, syrup is, has a higher viscosity than water. So that's how you can kind of get that idea. Okay, then it um, has high amounts of silicon dioxide. And if it's a thinner, then it's low silicon dioxide. Okay. That's pretty easy. So here's a way we can kind of look at it here. All right, and there's, you'll need to copy down this chart right here. And so um, when you have a lava flow right here, then what you've got, lava flows tend to be more, um, well, the, the lava itself is thinner in its consistency. And if it's thicker, it tends to explode, actually. That's kind of the whole point here. The least explosive ones are the ones that have low um, viscosity. Here's the word viscosity right here. Low viscosity means they, they flow, they ooze. It's an oozy volcano. Does that make sense? Not an oozy like, eh. I know you were thinking about that, weren't you? Um, it oozes out, okay? And a more explosive one has a high viscosity. And so the pressure builds up and it blows up as opposed to just sort of oozing out. Now the difference is actually, another thing interesting about these uh, is these temperatures. If you have a low temperature, not, it's hard to think of 700 degrees as a low temperature, but for magma, that's a low temperature. Okay, so low temperature, 700 to 900 degrees, and then um, they tend to be hotter, tend to be the ones that run more readily, and then the medium ones, right? So these flow, and these are called pyroclastic deposits. This means it's thick. And you might notice here, Yellowstone, Crater Lake, Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens was actually kind of a medium one, wasn't he? Okay. Now, also, if you look at this, you can also notice that the, the silica content, we were just talking about that, if you have our uh, lava flows, the ones that ooze out, 50% silica, and the ones that have high content tend to explode more, so 70%. So you kind of see this out. Another interesting thing is about the gas content. We haven't talked about that. We will later. The gas content, the oozy ones, the ones that ooze out, <laughs> I keep thinking of oozies, um, are just 0.5%, and these ones have high gas content. That's not a lot, 5%, but compared to 0.5%, that is quite a bit. So this is a great um, a chart that helps you understand things. Definitely put that in your notes. All right, so let's talk some more about the, so the type of volcano is actually determined by the type of, or the, by the silicon dioxide content. So if you've got, let's go back to our chart there, where'd it go? So um, if you notice here, we talked about the different kinds of this shield. So these, actually let's just write it on here. These are shield volcanoes right here. The ones that are high um, in temperature, low in viscosity, low in silicon dioxide content. And these would be your composite volcanoes. These ones explode, most explosive. These ones don't explode. All right, so you, you can determine it by that. Also, an interesting thing also, too, because it, it doesn't ooze so well, the ones that are high in SI2 tend to be steep slopes. So a composite volcano will be steeper in its slope because as it oozes out, it can't flow as well, right? It's not going to flow down the hill very well. Therefore, the opposite, if it's a low silicon dioxide, it's going to have a gentle slope. So remember, a gentle slope. This is Mount Kalehua, or whatever you call it in Hawaii. Okay? And so now, here, let's look at the types of volcanoes. So we've got, it's a little bit more complex. We've just said there's two types. Well, one thing, if you look at this particular picture, do you notice that's got a very gentle slope? So what kind of volcano is it? That's right, it's a shield volcano. So shield volcanoes, nice, gentle slopes. Here you see, nice, gentle slope. And then we have a fissure volcano. This is just, uh, let's not worry too much. The two we want to look at are shields and composites. Notice how steep the composite is. Okay. And this is actually called a caldera volcano. It's kind of interesting to talk about. A caldera volcano was a composite volcano that blew up and collapsed. So this turned into this. So that's, you know, that's kind of cool. They call it a dome volcano, etc. And then we've got the ash and cinder volcano, which I want to talk about a little bit later. That's sort of the third main type. 
Okay. Now let's uh, kind of talk about the concept. We'll go back to maps now and talk about the concept of relief. Now, what is relief? If you look at this map right here, instead of having um, you know the contour lines and all that kind of stuff, if you look at these maps, you can kind of see right down here. Um, you can see. Um, the mountains themselves. So it's like with a picture. So what would the picture sort of look like? You can see right here San Luis Valley. This is down Alamosa and all that kind of stuff. We see this big valley right here. And that's kind of cool. And uh, here's Pikes Peak. And we live, of course, just right here, somewhere in that range. Not even that far. We're probably more like right here. Um, but you can see Pikes Peak. and that, So these are called reliefs. So they kind of take pictures of, of where we're at right there. And then down here, you can see Colorado Springs. And you can kind of see it seems kind of flat because you don't see the bumps. So relief maps are really nice because they help you to kind of look at things. All right, and you can see another whole relief map of the whole uh, state of Colorado, and uh, lots of very cool things here. Here's here's Manitou Springs, Colorado Springs. So Woodland Park is just boom right there, right under the O of Colorado Springs, and uh, but you can kind of see the mountains around us. And, and actually, I, you know that video that we watched a little bit earlier. If you go outside towards Forest and stuff, if you look right here, this whole area is called South Park, and South Park. Guess what that is? That is the a collapsed super volcano. That is the caldera of a super volcano that is for long time. Uh, and this is many, 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 many miles apart, well, as you saw in the video. It's a huge caldera of, uh, of a volcano, okay? So that's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, all right. I'm not sure we needed that. Okay, now let's talk about a cinder cone volcano. Now I'm gonna describe this, and maybe I'll put a little call out on there. But what in blazes is a cinder cone volcano? So a cinder cone is, hold on, Kind of did weird things. Okay, is a small volcanic landform that typically forms on another volcano. So here's a classic example of cinder cone. This is the one inside of Crater Lake. Um, they're common on shield volcanoes. All right, on shield volcanoes, especially near the vent area. That's where it, you know it goes out. And um, and there's little small. They call it cinders because small cinders pile up, as you can see in the text there. Many people think that a cinder cone is large, but really it's actually not. And uh, the cinders are typically a quarter-sized rocks, and they range in color from red to brown to black and gray or white. I don't think you need to write all this down, but maybe get the gist of what's going on right there. So that's pretty interesting. Here's some cinder cone volcano. That's just pretty cool to look at, isn't it? I just, that's just a very cool picture from Life magazine. You can see the the. the that's where the cinders came out, etc. It's very cool. All right. Let's talk about just a, a few other uh, volcanic landforms and then call it good. There's what we call columnar joints. Now, what's a columnar joint? Well, here's actually a picture of a columnar joint. So, uh, columnar joints here. Here we have them. And what they are, what are they? Well, they're uh, jointing forms in lava flows. So you've got a lava flow and shallow intrusions of all compositions. So, you have this lava flow. Um, happen and then well let's just talk some more about it. here's another picture this is really very cool you'd think that somebody built this it almost looks like it was built but it's 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 normal they form due to stress and as the lava cools the lava contracts as it cools forming cracks once the crack develops it will continue to grow so it has to, these all have been cracked and if you look down from the top I mean notice the almost perfect hexagonal structure right here looking down on these um, columnar joints so that's all caused by uh, the volcanoes now the next thing to talk about is something called a basalt plateau alright now you can kind of read the text here um, lava flow pours uh, from great cracks so you've got lots of lava instead of it all coming up like in one place it's going to come up in lots of places bearing the eroded landscape so we've got this other landscape so this might be some uh, other kind of a rock and it just flows and it's, it fills kind of a whole region flow after flow blankets this is Hell's Canyon um, and known as the Columbia River basalts. These lava flows covered about 70,000 square miles in Oregon and Washington, Washington. So basically, in a basalt plateau, basically you've got lava coming up in lots and lots of places, cracks everywhere, and it just fills a whole area and region. And then you've just got these huge basaltic uh, plateaus, plateau being a flat region. And this is a picture of that. And you can kind of see here are the, the basalt. Basalt is a typically a very black rock. So maybe we should make a note there. Basalt is like the blackest of rocks, well, not the black but it's black rock definitely. All right. And then you can see another picture right here. All right, let's talk about pillow lava. This is kind of a funny kind of lava. These are lavas that contain characteristic pillow-shaped structures that looks like a pillow, right? That are attributed to the extrusion of lava underwater. So you've got 
an ocean, and then you've got a volcano on the bottom, and the lava comes up, and when it comes up, it produces um, pillow lava because it, it cools so quickly when it hits the uh, water. Um, and typically when this actually happens, we're going to see tons of gas coming out right here because, of course, uh, you've got very hot stuff, meaning water boils the water and produces lots of gas. All right, and lastly, magma composition and gases. So let's talk about the gases. We talked about that in that one slide. So what particular gases do you have in um, a volcano or whatever, or in magma, I could say. So you can kind of see here, this is how they test it, and we can see a picture of that. Um, and what we've got here is you can see the amount of each of the different uh, chemicals here. Notice here we've got all kinds of old, uh, exponential E. Remember that times 10 to the whatever? So the um, we can figure out the the amount of the gas, these are the molecules per square centimeter, and, um, and this is time, and they're measuring actually the gases. Now one thing about gases, of course, is they like to escape because they have, uh, well, they're less dense, and so if they, they bubble out, they'll try and escape, and we can measure the amount of gases. The key thing to understand here is there's lots of gases that you find in a volcano. You find water, that's the most amount, right? Carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrochloric acid, carbon monoxide, and a chemical COS. So lots of different chemicals. This one tends to vary. Notice the COS, it goes up and down over time. This is over a particular day because this one's escaping as it escapes. So magma has lots of different things in it, doesn't it? You've got the, silica, the silicates or silicon dioxides, all these kinds of things that are in magma. We've learned about the different types of volcanoes today. We've learned a lot of cool stuff. So hey, 